Hi everyone, good morning and welcome to our A to J Author New User Training. This is Jessica Frank with the Center for Access to Justice and Technology at Chicago Kent. Today's topic is updating your A to J guided interviews from 4.0 to 5.0. So our agenda today is on converting from 4.0 to 5.0 is why. Why should you make this update? How do you actually convert from 4 to 5? some problem solving for um, those 4.0 interviews, optimizing for mobile, testing, uploading to LHI, and then additional resources. So first, why should we update our guided interviews? You already have them live running on LHI, your 4.0 interviews work, why bother converting? One of the main reasons is that it has mobile capabilities in 5 that 4 doesn't have. It's also um, the current technology that we're working with here, and you'll have full team support for um, any bugs or issues that come up with 5. Eventually, 4.0 is going to be phased out, so not just from our technical support, but on the Law Help Interactive uh, server as well. And 5.0 is coming to LHI soon, so you want to start thinking about um, updating and converting your 4.0s to 5.0s. All right, so let's get into the nitty-gritty of how to actually convert it. And to do this, I'm going to switch into A to J Author itself. So where am I here if you've never seen it? This is the A to J Author website at a to j author.org. It is new-ish in the last year. Um, if there are things on the old site that you still want to access, it's still available at old.adajauthor.org. So this is the A to J Author website. Uh, once you are logged in, this is what you should see. And if you want to go into the actual authoring tool, you click Author here, and it pops up um, the A to J Author 5.0. Now, um, there are other webinars that we've done and that are posted on YouTube about how to make brand new 5.0 interviews, so I won't go into that. This is strictly for converting your old to new. So what you want to do is click this button at the bottom. Let me get my highlighter right here. You want to click Upload A to J Guided Interview. When I click that, up pops a list of files that I can select for, and I made a um, file on my desktop for testing, so I just direct down to it. And these are all ones that our students did um, in previous years or ones I've done in the past that are in 4.0. So if we go to um, due process petition for special education, if we open that one up, and you can see that it populated here, I'd already tested it, so that's why there's two of them here. Um, and we can see on the um, right-hand side, sorry, I, I can't see what this thing, anyway. all right, so we can see the date that it was created and the time. So you can see that I loaded this one about an hour ago, but I want to go to the one I just loaded, so the time stamped at 11.10 Central. If we want to open it, I want to check to make sure it's there. And here is my 4.0 interview, and it is now in A to J5. Um, and I can run through any of the questions, I can open them, I can preview it, I can edit, um, make any changes that I need to. So that is the super, or super simple issue on how to upload and convert a 4.0 to 5.0. Now there's still work that might need to be done, and we'll talk about that in the next slide. But that's the way to do it. So again, Interviews tab, which is the default tab that opens. So click Upload. Select one of your .a to j files. Uh, let's do one I've never done before. Open it. It has to refresh. So I can just refresh my screen. And that one was Healthcare. That's too big. Um, it might have been called My Interview. So if we scroll down one of these, um, oh, here, um, Healthcare Power of Attorney, right here. And there is my guided interview. Now this one, I it's um, auto-saved in my list of interviews here. 
which saves um, every time I click into a different section or every five minutes it auto saves. So there's no save button anymore um, in A to J Author. So problem solving. The main issues that you're going to run into with 4.0 to 5.0 conversions is the logic. So 4.0 was less strict than 5.0 is. So some of the logic that you had working in 4.0 is no longer accepted in 5. Um, it's generally simple things like the author didn't close a parentheses when they were typing in the logic in 4. There's uh, a weird little symbol that shouldn't be there. They didn't put, they would have like a go to and no destination. Or they didn't um, put a bracket around the variables. It's generally little basic things that break. Um, but they are things you need to check. So how do you check the logic or what are you looking for? So we created um, some FAQs with common logic errors and their fixes. It's the first question in the FAQs. Um, here um, is a note that all variables need brackets. If we go to our home page, I can show you where all the questions are, all the FAQs are. Let me just go back to our home page. Um, here is the frequently asked questions. And if we scroll to the beginning, what do the error messages mean? And here are sample logic errors explained. So um, if it says something like illegal token, un unexpected identifier, um, here's an example with this one where the author had two ors. So they had typed if has answered equals true or or has answered. So it's simple, things like that for the most part. And let me make that a little bit bigger for you guys. It can be unexpected um, things like they this uh, unexpected token right here, there um, the author forgot to close this first set of parentheses here. So there's a parentheses for in front of domestic violence trigger right here and there's no closing parentheses on it. So the um, logic is broken there. But so this whole list is on A to J author and you can look through it if you hit it. And the place to check in your guided interview if your logic is broken, instead of clicking through the questions, if you open up, and we'll open up that North Carolina one that I was just talking about. Sorry, it's not on this yet. Um, so let me scroll down to that North Carolina one that I just uploaded. And we go to all logic. There's no logic in this one. That's annoying. Um, so let me go to a different one here that I have that I know has logic. It's the due process. And you can see here this one only has one advanced condition. And this box is white, so it means it's working. If it was red, then we would know that we need to make adjustments and fix something in the logic. So you can go to these FAQs and check that out. The next thing to talk about is optimizing for mobile. So if you think about mobile, the screen is smaller. So when you have long question text, that might be something you want to think about editing down um, to make sure that it looks the way that you would like it to look in mobile, maybe even breaking it up into multiple questions. Another thing with mobile, and I will show you this in a second, um, question names are more prominently displayed to the end user. So your end user can see that uh, the name is one dash whatever, or um, they, can, they can see the question name more than just in that drop down menu. And your name is displayed on the first screen as the author. Um, so it says anonymous if you leave that section blank in about. But if you do put your name in that about section, it is displayed to the end user. So if we go back to A to J, so we're in my due process for special education. If we go to publish, test in mobile. Now um, I'm going to pop this out so that you can see it a little bit better. And I'm going to shrink it down so that it is the size of a phone, which is a little hard for you to see maybe, but I'll close my other ones. And let me just make you a blank slide here to, to look at as a background. 
Okay, so, sorry about that. Um, here is what it would look like to your end user shrunken down to about the size of a phone. And you can see that this author has not put a name in, so anonymous is listed as the author. We have the, it's very simple, it's very clean. We have the name of the guy to interview and then start. And they can always visit the desktop version. Click start. Hey Jessica, this is John Mayer. Sure, go ahead, John. Yeah, I just wanted to mention, this is not a final design, and um, we're, we're not going to add any more information that isn't already available in the desktop versions um, um, or take away uh, as much as possible information in the mobile one. And so um, uh, it's not yet 100% clear that, that we want to display the uh, the author's author's name. We, you know, we're, we're sensitive to the fact that um, People with legal problems will, will latch on to um, any name or uh, email address that they find to, uh, to send their um, um, problem to, you know, and so we, we know that that's not something that, uh, that we want to just display um, without, without, you know, putting it in appropriate context or, uh, or making it available in the, in the right place. That's all I wanted to say. Okay, so you can see here the name of the question is prominently displayed at the top. Um, this might be a way, um, or, the, or this might be something you need to edit for um, 4.0 interviews that, where the question names were um, just shown in the drop-down menu. Um, this is something that um, you need to think about. Pop-ups, you can, um, or learn more, so what is a learn more? They click and it pops up in the window, grays out the back, and then um, closes there. And then you can just see walking through here different screens, and then typing in names. But anyway, feel free to poke around in your own guided interviews and test and see how your current guided interviews look in mobile um, and test them out on your own devices as well. It's something to think about. That leads me right into testing, testing, testing. Hot Docs 11 is stricter on variable length names. They cannot be more than 50 characters. Um, a to J5 will pop up a message when you are previewing it in the desktop that says that the um, variable name is too long. So you do need to change that um, if any of your um, 4.0 interviews have character or have variable names longer than 50 characters, that needs to be changed. That's not us, that came from Hot Docs 11. So if um, it's working with the 11 server, you should be fine with your current interviews now. Make sure to test your repeat loops. Make sure to go down all those little branches and avenues to make sure your loops work. We haven't seen any problems with repeat loops, but that can be a gnarly little spot that you want to test. Again, test your logic. You can view your logic on the All Logic tab and see if any of it is broken, but you do want to make sure to go through it. And any special exiting that you have. If you have a save and exit where at a certain point they're supposed to be able to go to LHI, you're going to want to test that as well. An issue that's popped up if you've been watching on the listserv is um, to make sure your variables, variable types match in A to J and Hot Docs. So if you did not import your Hot Docs component file um, originally into your A to J guide interview and instead just um, created those variables in A to J, you need to make sure the type matches, variable type. Make sure your true-false variables actually are set to true or false, and it can be capitalized or not, um, but don't have them set to something like five or the name John instead. And also check that your XML lists are still working. So the file path could have been uh, to someone else's computer or an old computer or not the file you keep it in anymore. Um, that was an issue I ran into when I was doing the states. So that, um, that US states XML list that a lot of you use um, instead of typing in the states yourself, make sure that file path is still correct. And then target for implementing A to J5. Yes, yep. Can I can you go back to that previous screen and, 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 and can I offer some comments? Sure. So, um, so the, 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 the most ideal situation is that we, 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 convert your, we, we convert your A to J4 interview into something that works you know, uh, uh, perfectly in A to J5. Um, the, 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 the next level is we find errors that we know are errors and that we can fix them ourselves. 
and we're doing we're doing both of those things, obviously. Um, but we're also running into in our tests errors, uh, th things that are broken or or not perfect, but we're not 100% sure of the author intent. Um, and then and then there's the last one where where there's where there's where we where we know something's broken, but we don't know what what's going on. Um, and so the, our our our, our goal or our, or our path forward on that is we're probably going to add like a, a button or a feature or another tab. I'm not sure exactly where it will be in the uh, in the user interface. That that's sort of like a like an audit or a, or a, or a, a checker, sort of like the idea of uh, automated link checkers or, or or things like that. And it will run tests on your guide interview and and tell you, you know, here's a page that you that that doesn't seem to have a way to get to, you know, sort of an orphan page. Um, here's a link that seems to go off to something, you know, that doesn't exist, um, you know, a bad page name or something like that. Here's a variable that never gets used. Um, all sorts of little things that we're finding that, in which we may not be able to use to automatically fix a problem, but that we can sort of like report back to the, to the author and say, you might want to look at these things because they might be the cause of, of ambiguity or, or problems like that. Um, I personally, I, I think this is inevitable that as, as you uh, start using A to J author for more complicated stuff, then the, the, uh, the array of different things that could go wrong increases and the complexity goes up a little bit. And, and, it, and as a way to sort of give you tools to handle it, we're going to try to give you like these, these things, these reports that say, you know, here, here's what we think is not working or, or might, might be causing a, a difficulty. Um, but we, you know, we'd love to hear back from folks on, on any problems or any situation they have, you know, that would make us aware of, uh, of how better we can improve that. Um, and so this is going to be a little bit of a, an interactive process uh, as, as we, you know, roll out the full implementation and, um, you know, make it all work. So moving on to the, the date, I'm sure you all are interested in when is this going to be up on LHI. Um, we are shooting for the end of this month for implementing it on the LHI server. And once it is implemented, you can start uploading and testing your guided interviews. Um, but keep an eye on the Doc Assembly and LS Tech listservs and Twitter um, for announcements on when that implementation has actually occurred before you actually try and start uploading. And we will post um, all of that information because we are very excited about it. Additional resources. So this was kind of fast and um, it might have been a little confusing. So you can go to our A to J author website and we have our authoring guide for 5.0. It has um, over, I think almost 200 pages specifically on 5.0 and how to do everything you did in 4 um, in 5 with screenshots um, and it is a web document, it's a Google Doc. So it is constantly evolving and um, additions are being made. We also have our YouTube channel which has um, about 10 specifically on 5.0 videos on specific sections on how to make brand new A to J guide interviews in 5, how to do repeat loops, how to do functions, how to do macros, all of that kind of fun stuff um, that you did before in 4 if you need a refresher on it. All right, I can open the floor up and John is here as well if there are questions and you can always email me with your questions as well or call and my number is on there. So I'll open the floor up. So any questions, if you raise your hand, I will unmute you. If you type it in the question box, we can um, talk about it there too. You know, so we're at, we're, we're at that sort of stage where, where, um, where it's, it's, you know, uh, two steps forward, one step back kind of thing. Um, we we want we're 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 striving and reaching for the benefit of of the new version, you know it's a it's a web based, um, it's uh, it works on Macs. You don't have to download and install. When we fix things, it gets fixed for everybody. Um, you know the mobile the mobile piece is is a web based piece, which which will automatically uh, make all the existing interviews uh, mobile capable. Um, there are some issues to work out with that because people on mobile devices uh, are less secure. They they go in and out of apps all the time. They um, uh, they don't have a printer attached, 
you know, and so there might be some new uh, workflows or process flows that, that have to deal with those things. Um, you know, and, and at the same time, we're, uh, we're, we're, we're deep into working on a, the document assembly capabilities to add to this, which is, which is causing us to go back and rethink some things that we did in the original design of A to J5 um, so that, you know, we can integrate that. Um, you know, so, so I'm, I'm the first to admit you, we're, 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 we're working on a lot of different pieces all at the same time, as well as, um, you know, trying to, trying to uh, make the, the, the old systems, the old A to J4 interviews work as well. Um, and I'm pretty confident that we're, that, that we that we were keeping our bases covered, but, uh, but I'll, but I'll be the first to admit that there's going to be some, um, you know, hiccups and some bugs as we go along. Um, and so, you know, the goal of this sort of webinar is to is to start showing you guys, uh, you know, what what our thinking is and what our plans are, so we can get feedback. I know, as well as uh, you can make plans um, as you do into the future. So that was just a lot of talking to give you time to like raise your hand if you had a question. Uh, we we did have a question. So there's no going back from five to four. That is correct. Once it's a five, it cannot uh, be a. Well, it could still exist as a four in a separate file, but you can't back convert from five to four. What about alternative languages is the question. Um, we have a bunch of new languages in five that we did not have in four. Um, yeah, the short answer is it's much easier to do new languages in the browser-based um, uh, guided interviews than it was in the Flash-based. Um, to get just slightly technical, every time we added a new language in Flash, we had to add um, a, f a font set. You know, it, it took a couple of megabytes. The download took longer. It was a buggy. You know, there were there were some problems with it. But but adding a new language in the in the browser now we're dealing with the browser sits inside the uh, operating system ecosystem, and and that handles language changes and character translations much better than, than Flash did. So yeah, Jessica, click on that language pull down. As you can see in the in this one we've got, you know, Dutch, uh, Korean, uh, Polish, all the all the other ones. And if we and if we need to add new ones, it's relatively easy. So if there's if there's people out there who speak a language that's not on this list, we'll send you the 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 list of about Jessica, correct me if I'm wrong, it's like about two hundred words Oh, it's less than that. It's like less than that. It's so like 50, maybe. Oh, 50, 50 words, and all you do is write the word in the language that you want. It's a text file, and then when we drop it on the server, it, it automatically becomes available. Now, I always have to caveat this. All that does is change the Chrome of the viewer. It doesn't change the language of your that you that you've typed in for the interview. There's no automatic translation system built into this. Um, and I don't think there's going to be one um, in the near future because um, the Google Translate ideas um, uh, are a little, they're, they're, they're not enough for, for the complexity of, of legal language for, uh, for you to trust with that. I hope that answered your question. Um, we had another question for um, Sun typing it in, that how do I get the answer file from testing the A to J so that I can test it in desktop hot docs? So I'm going to move this over here. Um, so if you want to go into preview and you open up the variables and script window down here. So I clicked this button down at the bottom left that says variable slash script. I could also just click the A to J logo at the top. Um, this is blank because I haven't gone through anything, but you click save and it saves your .anx file. So As a it download, downloads, yeah. yeah, it downloads it and then you can open it and save it. Um, show in folder. So it's down there. So you have saved a bunch of answer files and then you can just take it and test it in Hot Docs. Well, um, thank you all for attending and showing up today. If you do have any questions, feel free to email me them. Or if you have any issues that pop up while you're converting or testing your 4.0 to 5.0 interviews, please let us know as well. And we will see you all next month in August. And have a good weekend.